Hi, this is Gavin. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you Excel and Cymatic working together. This is not a complete tutorial on using Excel or anything like that, it's just a quick look at using a spreadsheet. Um, I've already loaded the Lay the Field spreadsheet which you can download from the Cymatic forum, it's, it's available there. Um, I've added an extra condition um, since then, so you might want to uh, add this or add some additional conditions yourself to see if you can make a um, see if you can make a successful <coughs> strategy using the spreadsheet. That whistle means that it's time for the race to start. So the idea with lay the field is that you're looking to lay more than one ho one horse. So you want to lay at least two, and then you'll guarantee a profit, whatever the outcome. I've got the sheet set up to lay the horses at a price of 1.61 but it's not going to lay all of them it's going to only lay the only lay some of them so that it doesn't use all the account funds on unnecessary bets that aren't going to get matched so we're looking to lay a horse if its price is under <laughs> under 2 and that charming noise means <laughs> the race has gone in play so we want to lay a horse if its price is under two but only if there are other horses which are competing with it and aren't miles behind and so we've said only if those horses are at a price of less than 3.8 so there's got to be at least two horses under 3.8 one of them is, is going to be the horse with the, that we want to bet on and that's got to be under two so let's see what happens just scroll across so you can see the rest of the spreadsheet there. It's a six furlong race, the 15-15 at Haydock and at the moment you can see it's it says price is zero on all these rows down here that's because they're either non-runners or they've already gone to zero and not clearly lost the race or there's just no entry there for that that row so we don't want to bet on horses which have got a price of zero obviously and, it's and that sound means that it's been suspended and we haven't made any bets on this race but in a way that's a good thing and I'll, I'll explain that in a moment so it says strong favourite that means that this horse does meet the criteria it is less than a price of two but there aren't any accompanying horses which are at a, at a low price as well so we don't want to bet on a strong favourite so we know that it's almost triggered but not quite because it needs one more condition to be met so why is it a good thing that we didn't bet on this race well you don't want to if, if, you, if you didn't bet on a race it's a good thing because it means that you didn't lay a strong favourite and it steamed in and went on to win and you just wasted money laying a horse you want to lay more than one horse so building conditions that stop you needlessly laying one horse um, are what this is all about and you might want more conditions you might want to say well um, and by the way we'll look at another race in a moment and see if we can get a, a um, make, make some money with it but you might want to add another condition something like and this would be in visual basic probably not with probably not with formulae saying something like well the conditions met I've sent a bet but now the condition isn't met anymore the secondary horse has gone way out it's not under 3.8 I'll cancel the bet on the first horse and try to stop that getting matched and then I'll place the bet again if the conditions are met whereas at the moment this is just a very simple spreadsheet it just leaves the bets in and hope that everything pans out so let's select the next race it's going to be the 1530 at Nottingham so that's in 12 minutes time I'll pause the video and continue in a moment hi and welcome back um, I left the system running during the next race and which was the uh, 1530 
and as you can see it's had two lay bets matched this is just demo mode by the way but obviously if this was live mode I would have made seven pounds eighty profit let's go back to the spreadsheet and you can see the two bets match there so that's the the idea just to make sure that you get at least two bets matched and if if there's danger of only getting one bet matched you don't place the bet and like I said you'd probably want to add more conditions to remove a bet that was looking good but then doesn't look good and things like that and see if you can build something that's a profitable strategy using this foundation so if you wanted to do this all day you would need to and using the autopilot so that you didn't need to sit there hand holding it you would need to simply choose the autopilot tab click this button to load all the races into the autopilot I'm going to select end of in play which is when it will jump onto the next race when the current race ends ends in play and let's just click that button and that will fill the autopilot tab with all the races they're already ticked um, select the first race which for us is the 1540 we've just done the 1530 and click this button this checkbox here and that activates the autopilot so it's now ready to start jumping on to the next race and so on you will also want to make sure that this checkbox is ticked that, that this menu option is ticked clear status cells when selecting a different market now let's go back to the spreadsheet scroll over a little bit the status cells are these ones here now you can see it's cleared those already because we've switched to a different market when we were on the previous market these cells said something like placed if a bet had been placed or pending whilst a bet was being placed and the status cells must be empty otherwise the trigger will not um, do anything so if it says lay in this column here because the trigger has been activated it won't actually send a lay bet unless the status cell is empty so you're going to want that option ticked to make sure that it keeps clearing the cells when it selects a new market let's just have a quick look at one of the formulae if it's not true that it's activated that's that box there this one next to it if it's not activated just say deactivated let's show you that it's deactivated so then they all say deactivated now so they're not going to place a bet let's reactivate it and then the next nested if condition if the price is above the price we want then just say watching prices so you can see it says here watching prices because it's at 2.76 and we want it to be under 2 the next nested if statement is if the price is zero don't do anything just say price is zero like I said earlier we don't want to bet on non runners or horses that have already lost or rows where there aren't any selections and then finally if BG3 that's this one over here is true sorry is false then we'll say strong favorite so if there aren't at least two horses under this 3.8 then there must be one horse that's a strong favorite if it's under a price of two so we'll say strong favorite so you can see that there's one horse that's almost ready to trigger but it's it really needs other horses to come and compete with it before we'll do anything and obviously if that condition is met and it's true not false will send a lay bet by putting the word lay in this cell the odds and the stake are also filled with similar formulae it's just the and formula instead of uh, a whole nested if statement because we don't need to say lots of different things according to which conditions are met or not we just need to put the odds or put the stake in there so I've used an and set of ifs um, 
clear the status you don't really need to use that if you're automating because like I said it, you don't want to clear the status during the race and start putting second bets on the same horse um, it's just uh, a feature that I put in earlier to show you how to create a clear status button if you go into developer mode and it's probably best if I just disconnect this while I'm doing it so there's not data coming in whilst I'm trying to show you something if you go into developer, uh, the developer tab and, uh, and right click I think I'm already in developer mode design mode there it is and right click it will select that button and you can change the text assign a macro to it um, etc and, and look at the code behind just a quick look at that click on the visual visual basic button somatic I think it's in modules and there's the code for the clear status button so have a look at that and see what you can do to use those uh, comments in there to help you learn how to do a bit of uh, visual basic programming <laughs> but this this spreadsheet is really just built with formulae the, the clear status button and the visual basic code behind it is not really part of this strategy so all of this is done just with simple formulae okay so thanks for watching and bye for now